Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I would like to go through uh, some of my settings. This was requested in uh, one of my last videos by uh, Aldo ADK, one of my beautiful subscribers. So he was uh, he was asking uh, what kind of settings I'm using, what kind of uh, keys I'm using, basically for the uh, for the flying. So now let's check my uh, my setup. I don't know whether you are interested in, uh, let's say, uh, simulation, graphics, sound, and so on, but I will maybe go uh, through that. So this is the simulation. I'm flying on an ACE level, uh, realism rating 100%. Everything should be like... Uh, like this in order to get like <laughs> just just the best experience so that's it maybe you should increase your acmi acmi file uh this is this is used like you can record your flying by pressing the f key probably i will check it later so probably it's an f key if i if i remember it correctly so you can record all your all, all your flight and then you can uh, simply see how it how it goes. Maybe I will I will show this in uh, in my next uh, next video how you can record like uh, anything from your flight. So I'm going to increase it. The the files are pretty small, but uh, if you want to record such uh, some longer longer time, it's always uh, good to increase the size a little bit. By default, it is just five megabytes but uh, 50 like 10 times and more is, is uh, more than enough definitely i'm skipping the intro movie while i go into into uh, falcon 4 and i should uh, select never for the update check just because there are like no updates coming out for a pretty long time basically the last update was was this uh, 1.13 on 20 20 uh, 2008 basically so this was like the uh last time when uh, some update was released <clears throat> maybe you should use also smart scaling it's uh somehow like a compensation for for the resolution of the of the monitors basically by your own eyes you can see better than you can see on your computer so such smart scaling should uh, enable enable you to view uh, vehicles, aircrafts, uh, simply uh, better than without it. I don't know exactly what this means, but should be something like like this. Maybe I will I will need to check the manual, but it should somehow compensate the uh, the uh, imperfection of the or imperfection of the monitors, basically, which are worse than your own eyes. Uh, you you should also maybe check this radio calls Jules Bullseye. This will make the uh, game a little bit more difficult, but maybe more accurate. Uh, basically, what that means, if you can imagine any any map, any any battlefield, and uh, if you if you set set uh, somewhere a point, which is this bullseye, somewhere, and, and all your allied like, like all the aircrafts, all the soldiers know that the bullseye is this point exactly, then you can say uh, any position regarding this bullseye. For example, something is, let's say, 30 degrees and 20 miles from the bullseye, and you know exactly where this point is, basically. So that's uh, good for the navigation. For example, for uh, Royal Air Force in the Second World War, if they decide uh, that the bullseye will be, I don't know, West, Westminster Abbey, for example, so uh, they can say that uh, some objects are flying like uh, 120 uh, degrees and, uh, I don't know, 100 miles from the bullseye. And you know exactly where, are, where they are currently. So usually the AVAX is also using uh, bullseye calls. If you if you switch it on, like, uh, he's, he's using this, this calls. If not, he will tell you like the uh, the heading uh, in relation to you. Basically, it's much, much it's much easier. So he will get you the information about the bandits. For example, if someone behind you 
he will tell you that uh, the bandit is at heading, I don't know, uh, 100, 180 for example, if you are flying north, the bandit is uh, 180 and the distance 20 miles is from you, not from the like uh, bullseye, so it's much easier for you to distinguish uh, where the bandit is if you are not using the bullseye, but uh, if you want to be as, uh, as realistic, as precise as possible, then uh, use bullseye definitely. So that's the simulation, graphics uh, pretty easy, nothing complicated here, just the, just the graphic card you are using, some direct 3D, resolution for the game, as you can see, uh, current resolution in this menu is uh, 1024 multiplied by 768, but in the, in the simulation I, you, you can use like higher resolutions. Unfortunately, the menu, the menu is not in full, full HD, so that's why I'm uh, splitting uh, usually videos into two parts. Like the, the briefing is one video, and the uh, flight itself is in, is in second video. For example, Falcon BMS has like also the uh, menu in full, full HD, so it's uh, it's much easier. I don't know about this setting. I'm using just the anisotropic filtering. Maybe I should map terrain with map 3D models. Maybe it will help somehow. Uh, cockpit selection default. I don't know. There is no other other option. Textures just ultra. And uh, canopy cues. Maybe I'm gonna switch back to both. Will help me to this. Oh, maybe I I will stay by the reflections only. So you can select. What should be displayed on your canopy, like from the inner side, basically nothing. Or you can have reflections there, like you can see your your cockpit reflecting on the on the your dashboard reflecting on the canopy, basically from the from the inner side. Or you can see the lift line, which will help you to identify where your head is head is currently uh, heading, or where are you looking, basically. But if you are using like track air, it's uh, pointless because you always know where, where you are like uh, looking with your head. Or you can switch both basically, see that, see the lift line and the reflections as well. Sound pretty easy, nothing special. I just slightly uh, put down the music, it's very loud in the menu. Okay, so that's why I simply put it a little bit down. There is no music in the in the simulation. Definitely, <laughs> you are not listening to some some Spotify when you are over the uh, Balkan territory. Uh, let's keep the keys at the last. Uh, let's let's jump to the controller. So I'm using the uh, Cytec X52 Pro. That's the only joystick I have, basically, uh, like the basic axes uh, are here on the like uh, right stick. I'm using the rudder, I don't have like rudder pedals, I'm using the uh, rotation of my, of my stick, left right for the rudder, and the throttle is on the left hand, basically the tr throttle control. All others is selected for the keyboard. Uh, I can select also track air moves view in the 2D cockpit, but uh, this was like uh, confusing for me just because the 2D cockpit is uh, jumping. It's, it's not like fluent moved from left to right. It's jumping like a slideshow and it's not very like, uh, like comfortable. So uh, I switched it off, but you can also use track air in your 2D cockpit. But definitely, if, if you have it, it will be automatically used in your uh, 3D cockpit. So let's go through keys. Let me quickly check the F key. A, V, T, R. Probably this is the, the ACME file. Probably you, you will start recording by pressing the F key. I will, I will, I will check it in my, in my next video. While while in in air, I will start recording. Maybe maybe you can record. For example, if you encounter um, some flight of MiG 29s or or Sukhois or whatever, 
you can stop uh, start recording it and if you got shot down you can basically see when the enemy was firing the missile how the missile you can see all the trajectory all the data about the missile like the altitude the speed the heading and you can see basically what shot you down where was what was your position what was the position of the missile basically maybe if you if you made some mistakes you can also check this like you can see that oh i made a mistake here i was flying like to right and i should be flying to re to to left for example just to avoid this missile and so on so it's it's maybe good for for your debriefing just to check these uh these files these videos later and you can rewind them you you can fast forward them so it's like uh, just just think like video recorder of your flight you will see all your enemies all the missiles in the air basically all the bombs all the tanks on on the ground so it's very very detailed okay let's go through the through the joystick for the gunfire i'm using the trigger in front this is the fire gun i i will basically press all the triggers on my joystick so you will see what kind of uh, what kind of uh, mapping I'm using for the joystick? All other is uh, just pure clicking in the in the to the cockpit, or I'm using keyboard for that. For for example, if you play G, it's the landing gear typically. But I have if I had also on my joystick, so I have landing gear or joystick, or I can press G, or I can go into the cockpit and uh, move the lever down. Therefore, I can land. I, I can put down the landing gear. The same, for example, for uh, for the jammer, I can use the J key, for example, or I can go on to the joystick. Here I, I have also like the EZM switching uh, button here, and also I can go to the left console on my in my cockpit and click uh, with mouse on the exact like switch in the cockpit. So. There are like three possibilities how to, for example, uh, use the EZM, how to switch it on and off, basically, on, on your joystick. If you, if you map it there or on the keyboard or by, or by the mouse in the, in the cockpit. So I'm going to go through all the buttons on my, on my joystick. And uh, you will see basically what kind of uh, keys I'm using. I think these are the most uh, useful keys for me. I use them maybe, maybe the most time, so... I really need to have them on this uh, on this hotas on this joystick. I do not want to uh, jump to keyboard and search for these keys on the keyboard, so that's why I set up it on the uh, here on this uh, joystick. And as you can see, there are a lot lot of keys here. Basically, maybe if you are familiar with Falcon 4, the old from Micropros, or with the BMS Falcon. Or even DCS, you, you you will see like plenty plenty of uh, keys and functions, and uh, basically all the keys all the keys are uh, multiplied here by shift, by control, by uh, shift out, for example. So it's really like a huge combination. But basically, most of these, like for example, the ICP, you can simply go into the cockpit. You don't have to remember that. Uh, for example, if you want to set up the uh, where is it? Cruise steer point mark fix. I'm using number two ICP for the bingo, for example. So you don't need to know that uh, if you want to set up bingo fuel, bingo fuel warning, you don't have to press like uh, control and numeric eight, but you can simply click in the cockpit on the specific button. So that's that's the advantage of a clickable cockpit, just because you can remember all the functions, all the keys in your like visual memory, and you don't have to use your shift out, shift control, shift control. It's uh, really like uh, pretty much useless. Shift control alt G, for example, for the alternate landing gear. This is definitely useful combination. For example, you don't ha you have to remember it. In some cases, when you are like uh, really damaged and your engine goes off, like for example in the training mission flame out landing, your engine is off, you are running out of fuel, and you are just gliding to the airfield. The G key is not working. You have like no hydraulic press for, or pressure, not not enough hydraulic pressure to operate the 
landing gear like uh, by the pumps you have to uh, you have to uh, manually uh, put down the landing gear so that's the shift control alt g combination for the alternate landing gear and therefore you are you are able to extend or extract your uh, landing gear even with your engine shut shut off so uh, that's really useful maybe i'm using also the combination control shift and c for open close canopy that's also one key combination for me which i do remember the other is for example uh, control z and then air pressing this shows you the uh, frames per second on your screen so you know uh, basically your frame rate okay let's go through the keys now i will just press the keys on my right hotas for my right hand so first is the uh, trigger for the uh, gun second is the pickle for bombs rockets missiles everything like this then i'm using the switch for moving my uh, cursor keys that's the cursor on my radar for example or or i'm navigating like maverick by this locking the target uh, then there is the key for the air to air mode air to ground mode as well so these two keys are on my joystick i'm releasing uh, chuffs and flares also on my right hand and uh, there is another knob which i'm using like to move my head around the cockpit like to look right left that's also uh, used by the uh, thumb by my right thumb and the keys or switches on basis of my joystick are the ezm basically night vision goggles navigation mode which returns me from the let's say aa or air ground into the navigation mode then there is the wheel brake on my on my joystick basis as well the air brake as well and the landing gear toggle so that's that's the right joystick the left joystick i'm using the steer points here basically uh, like next steer point previous steer point uh, i can cycle hard points so maybe you, in some cases you want to uh, launch just the amrams from from your right side or if you have like bombs on a specific pylon you want to use just bombs on your let's say left left side just on this runway for example and then on the on the next airfield you will use the bombs from the right hard point so you can always select uh, which hard points to use for the uh, bomb missile release that's that's this button then i'm using the uncage mode for the sidewinder on the left joystick uh, and this is also the u key also works with the maverick so in order to use the maverick you have to like uncage it so it will like activate it uh, it's a uh, seeker and you, you will see through the seeker the 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 view from the seeker will be displayed on your right mfd so basically that's that's the key i'm using also some uh some macros for the for the avax here i'm pressing the keys now but all you can see is just this uh, queue here like radio avax commands but there are like three commands uh, behind it uh, first key position is for the declaring the target second is for the uh is for the picture and the last one is for the closest threat information about uh, what kind of fighter is uh, close to you there is also a key for a maverick field of view so i'm using this for the zooming in out the maverick it's also on my left hand and the let's say the mostly used keys on my left hand are the uh, radar designate target so just just using to lock the target and then disengage the target or return to search radar return to search basically so these are the these are the keys I'm using. For example, uh, for me, I'm using it for let's say ages, and I'm basically very used to use the setup. These are the mostly uh, used keys by me. Maybe it won't work for you. I don't know, but uh, somehow 
<laughs> I, I was flying this uh, simulator for quite a long and I was uh, like uh, checking what kind of functions, what kind of uh, uh, keys I'm using the most and I was uh, mapping them slowly one by one onto the joystick. So that's how, I ver how it works for me. I was uh, simply starting with the gun and the uh, pickle, for example, for the for the weapons release. I, I knew that I have to have this on my joystick. This is like the most common. Uh, then I was, for example, moving the cursor with the uh, with the keyboard. For example, I started like this, but then I re realized that okay, there is a free free knob on my on my joystick. So why not to assign these uh, these uh, arrows? Or these cursor keys to my joystick and use a thumb for it. So I I assigned I map it to the joystick and then I start using it from the from the joystick. So my hand is all all the time on my on my on my joystick. My right hand is on the joystick all the time, and I I'm, I'm able to fly and also to move my cursor, for example. So that's that's how I was uh, working through the setup. Basically, I was flying the simulator and I was. Uh, I was clicking basically on the on the instrument panel, or I was using the keyboard, and I was just remembering what kind of function I'm using the most, and where to put it on my joystick. So I basically put all the most used functions for me on my joystick. That's that's how I how it worked for me. I'm going to do the same for the uh, for the BMS now. Maybe I can use some of the functions from the, let's say, Allied Force setup, but some of them are new, some of them work different in the Allied Force and in BMS, so I need to remap them and uh, just think about it, how to, uh, what functions, what uh, what keys to set up on my, on my joystick. So, hope this uh, video makes uh, sense for you. If you want to say anything else about the uh, about the setup, I'm here, so you can you can ask me all the time anything about it. Oh, I ha I have already 16 flight hours. That's that's great. So you can ask me anytime what, uh, what kind of information you are looking for. It seems that you know uh, you know the Falcon BMS, so you you are like very familiarized with uh, Allied Force, the BMS goes more deeper into the uh, simulation. It's like uh, its depth of the simulation is really amazing and it's uh, far, far behind the Allied Force, for example. So if you are familiar with BMS, if you know the BMS, uh, you will be very much uh, easier to set up the, uh, the Allied Force, which is basically just... Uh, it's just just like uh, BMS for beginners, basically. It's very very like uh, easy to get into this uh, into this simulator, in my uh, my humble opinion. So, guys, thank you for watching. As always, have fun, take care, and bye.